Hey everybody, it's been a long time. I guess summer got the best of me. I've been on vacation, been doing a little of this and a little of that, and it's been great, but it's good to be back. I hope your fall semester is starting off great, and I'm excited to be back with another video. Back in April, I made a video about how we use signals to get two processes to communicate with each other. Today, I wanna to continue that theme, that is inner process communication, and talk about pipes and named pipes. Now, you've probably used pipes before, but you just didn't realize it. So the first program you ever wrote, which is Hello World, used pipes. It just wrote Hello World to standard out. You just really didn't think about it, and we can actually make it more explicit if we use fprintf. We can just actually say print to standard out, and then it will show up. And we can easily change it so it prints the standard error instead. Students sometimes wonder why we have two, why we have standard out and standard error if they both sort of end up in the same place. Because by default, they do just sort of get mixed together. And the reason is that sometimes you actually want to separate normal output from a program from error messages. You see, like I said, when we're in the terminal, the default behavior is for both standard out and standard error to dump their data all mixed together. But we have other options as well. You know, for example, we can redirect standard out to a file, or we can redirect standard error to a file. And we can redirect one of these pipes to another process. And so this, this effectively connects standard out of one process to the standard in of another process. So this is really cool. It actually allows you to chain together a bunch of smaller programs to do something more complicated. For example, say I want to see how many Chrome processes are currently running. I can use PS to list the current running processes. And if I pipe the output of PS to grep, then I can just list those that are Chrome. And then I can pipe grep's output to WC, which is a little program that you may not be aware of, but it counts characters, words, and lines. So these are all really simple programs, but I just combine them together in this pipeline to actually do something more complicated. So the pipes you've created so far, they're just, they live temporarily while these processes are running. But if you want a pipe that sort of sticks around and you can actually give them names and then they actually live in the file system. So let me show you. So here's an example. We can just, we can create a pipe here and we give it a name. You can see that it looks like a file actually, but it, it's a little different. So the file system knows that it's not a file, but, but it's listed in there with all the other files in the directory. And so now I can dump data into that named pipe and it's gonna block until someone comes along to receive the data. And then, and then once I come get the data, then the first process gets to proceed. And so, of course, you can do this from your programs as well. You just open a pipe like you would a file in either read or write mode using open, and then it's gonna work just the same as it did in the terminal. Okay, and named pipes are nice because now your programs can communicate even if I didn't start them together. Like before, when we just used pipes, I started them all with one command and they all communicated. With named pipes, one can come, then the other, and it, you don't need to coordinate them quite as tightly. It, so it, it's just a more flexible option. And of course, when I'm done with the pipe, I can just delete it like I would delete any file. And sometimes named pipes look so much like a file that some people may be tempted to ask, why not just use a file? And of course you can, but there are some reasons why you might use a named pipe instead of a file. Because files have some disadvantages. The main one is that they're slow. If you just want to communicate and you use a file, well, that data is going to get written to disk because the operating system doesn't realize that you're just using it for communication. You don't necessarily want that data pushed to disk. You're just trying to communicate. So with a named pipe, this is much faster. Name pipes are also faster than sockets, which is something I haven't really talked about. It's another option for inter-process communication, and it's one that I plan to talk about in a future video. But when you're looking at files and sockets, name pipes are definitely a faster option. That's really all I have for you today. Pipes and named pipes, they're super useful to get your processes communicating. And I hope that's a new tool that can help you in your future projects and your future work. And until next time, I'll see you later.